Good morning from Cozy Corner and Shabbat Shalom from the city of the Great King, the city of rejoicing, his resting place forever. Well, I'm happy to report that joy does come in the morning. You know, friends, there is no way around difficulties. There's no way around challenges. It doesn't matter how many chapters you read in your Bible. This is life. We're in a fallen world. Stuff happens. And when we're going through the fire, or we feel that we're being immersed in waves that are not happy, that are very difficult, there's no way around it. It We will come up out of those waves in God's time. Of course, it's critical that we hold on to God. Yesterday morning, my cozy corner cut off very quickly, and I apologize for that. Those of you who were watching that didn't mean to leave you on the edge of your seat, so to speak. But it's been a very challenging time, but joy does come in the morning, and it always does. And I often refer to this expression, I may not always feel good, but God is always good. And that brings me great comfort because he's my steady. That's what I was saying, and then I think I, I soon got cut off. Um, he is our steady. He is my rock. I was with a dear friend the other evening, and I was telling her how much I have grown in the last two years in my home in Dan Center, which I prayed in for ten and a half years. And he is the God of the 11th hour. Oh, how true that is. And I was telling her, like, growth is just expedited. It's exponential. It's supernatural. And she said, I can absolutely see that in your life. Your li I think she called me like an oak of righteousness. And it's like, wow. The thing is, is that we need to bloom where we're planted. And that is a very profound statement. Bloom where you're planted. Because God can use you, friend, anywhere you are. Wherever he's placed you, we just have to have available hearts. I want to talk about being a good steward of our hearts. You know, there is pain that we can avoid. There is pain that we can't avoid just by being in this life, in this body. Though I am spirit, I am also flesh. I live in a human body. Let's not be in denial about that, Church of God. We are not just spirit. We have surrendered our fleshly nature to our spirit. And that was a critical decision for us to make, to put our faith and our hope in Yeshua, our sin sacrifice, so to speak, our covering, our atonement. Yeshua has bridged us back to God because our sins separated us from God the Father. And when we received Yeshua, Jesus, God's salvation, we are now positioned heaven-bound. Hallelujah. But we have a one-of-a-kind, not but, but and. We have a one-of-a-kind destiny. <clears throat> and my heart is for those of you who are struggling. And we all struggle. But the important thing is, is that we don't let go of God. You know, you've heard the expression, hold everything loosely except for God. You know, I want you to honor your heart today. That is my heart, that we all honor our hearts. When we honor our one-of-a-kind hearts that's hidden in Messiah Yeshua. We're honoring God, and I believe that we bring God the greatest glory when we truly live out our greatest potential in Him. You know, God had us and He created us even before we were in our mother's womb, Psalm 139. And so we are that special. We are that precious to God that if it was only me or only you, God would have come. Yeshua would have laid down his life. It was If it was only one of us, this is how precious and valuable. So what does that say? That says that we need to make right decisions, healthy decisions for our lives. Our hearts are the garden of the Lord, I choose to call it. That's how I see it. This is the garden of the Lord. Do not dishonor your heart today. Do not change who you are to please anybody else. Now, I don't mean don't compromise in relationships. I mean don't change the one-of-a-kind you that God has made you to be. Don't try to fit into somebody else's expectations. This world needs your one-of-a-kind person. Your fingerprints prove you're one-of-a-kind. Don't try to be somebody else. I think that grieves God's heart 
Be with like-minded and like-hearted people. Get yourself around people who fan that flame of Yeshua in you, who inspire you, who encourage you. Listen, uh, someone asked me the other day if I was healed. In other words, he watched my documentary and he kind of wanted to confirm, so you're healed. He said it a couple of times. And I got back to him and I said, I've been thinking about that. Oh, yes, I have great healing uh, from my childhood and everything. But am I 100% healed? No, I don't think so. And I don't know if anybody's 100% healed until they go up to be with God in heaven. So the important thing is that we're in a healing process and that we know what the word process means. Very important that we are connected to God, to ourselves and to others, that we we know what's going on emotionally. Uh, a friend of mine was telling me about a book, which is actually by one of my previous pastors, Pete Scazzaro in Elmhurst, Queens, and it's called Emotionally healthy spirituality. I haven't read it, but he talks about that for at least two decades, he had no emotional healing. He received Yeshua and he thought that was that. I'm paraphrasing now, but he realized that he needed to get his heart healed. You know, if we want to be effective ministers of love, because we're called to be love, the hands and feet of Yeshua, we better get on a healing path. Because I always talk about this. You can be saved 50, 60 years and your heart is broken to pieces, devastated. That is absolutely not God's will. So let's hunger and thirst for God and his healing for our lives so we can be genuinely compassionate, genuinely authentic, genuinely sincere. And our ministries for people will be so much more effective. Let us be loved. God bless you from the city of the great king, Yerushalayim.